What's up guys, Lifting here. This is a preliminary build guide for my Crit Ball Lightning Witch. This build is for you guys who are interested in trying out the build and can't wait for me to finish the full build guide. This video will show you the most important information you need to get started, such as the skill gem setup and the skill tree. And this build can be played as a shadow as well if you prefer that, and I'll show you how to do that in just a bit. So, we use Ball Lightning as our main attack source, Vault Storm Call as a second, and Herald of Thunder as the last. The build relies on crits to deal the bulk of the damage, and crits are great for this build as it not only directly scales the damage of our build, it also scales it indirectly by constantly shocking the enemies, thus making them take 50% more damage. For defenses, we rely on a high life pool, Archic Armor, and if you can afford it, a Cloak of Defiance from Mind Over Matter. If you can't afford a Cloak of Defiance, then simply use a rare energy shield based uh, chest instead. That's completely fine. To help with reflect damage, we will use Purity of Lightning and a Topaz Flask. Now, let me show you the skill gem setup we use for this build. Okay, so for skill gems, guys, I have Ball Lightning, and as you can see, I have it at 20% quality. Which is pretty nice, it adds 20% increased lightning damage, but you don't need that, so don't worry about that if you can't find one of those. Uh, and I have linked this with a spell echo, so that every time you cast once, we will shoot out two bolts of lightning. We have increased area of effect, we have lightning penetration, which penetrates the monster's lightning resistance, thus making us deal more damage. And lastly, we have power charge and critical. Power charge on critical works by every time we crit, there's a chance that we gain a power charge, as the name implies. And that's our main way of staying a power charge, which gives us that really high critical strike chance for this build. One thing to note about this skill gem is that you don't need to use this until late in the game when you actually start to rely on critical hits. So for a long time you can actually use a 4 link very efficiently, so don't worry about getting a 5 link until later on. And yeah, as I said, this is our main way of sustaining our power charges. Another way we sustain our power charges is by using our Herald of Thunder, Curse on Hit, Assassin's Mark, the Skill Gem setup. And the way that this works is that since we are a lightning based build, we will shock our enemies very oftenly. And when you kill a shocked enemy while having Herald of Thunder active, um, this skill will activate and shoot lightning bolts down from the sky. And these lightning bolts will then spread Assassin's Mark through Curse on Hit. And Assassin's Mark will give us that chance of granting an additional power charge when we kill an enemy. Besides that, it also increases our critical strike chance. And it increases the damage of the critical strikes that we deal. So, very nice. So, for Aura setup, we're using Discipline, Clarity, and Purity of Lightning. And all of these are linked with Reduced Mana. Uh, Discipline will add a flat amount of energy shield that will then be converted through Eldritch Battery, thus giving us more mana and higher mana regeneration rate. And Clarity, of course, grants us that flat mana regeneration rate. Uh, the last aura we're using is the Purity of Lightning, as I said. And Purity of Lightning is there to protect us against Elemental Reflect damage, so that if we meet an Elemental Reflect pack and we hit them with a Ball Lightning, uh, they will reflect Lightning damage back to us and purity of lightning will increase that maximum lightning resistances that we have thus making us much more safe against uh, elemental reflect damage and for the same reason we're using a topaz flask to increase that uh, maximum lightning resistances for those encounters uh, to be more safe but yeah the whole idea behind running discipline and clarity was to get that mana regeneration up so we can run arctic armor that's our main defense arctic armor will protect us from physical damage and fire damage and to further improve our defenses, we're using Caspian Damage Taken, level 9, Enduring Cry level 10, Immortal Call level 9, and Increased Duration, and this can be whatever level it uh, can reach, because it is a support gem, it isn't uh, restricted by the maximum level requirement of Caspian Damage Taken, so just level it all the way. Lastly, we are using Lightning Warp, linked with cast to Casting and Reduced Duration, and that combination gives us a fast Lightning Warp speed, very nice. And now we actually have room for another falling, and for that falling, I'll be using some sort of Vol Storm Call setup. I haven't really decided what it's going to entail yet, but I'll definitely be linking it with increased duration and probably faster casting, or maybe Spell Echo if that actually works. I'm not sure it works, but uh, faster casting most definitely, and uh, some other kind of uh, support gem. And that's about it for the uh, skill gems, guys. 
Okay, so about the skill tree, guys. You can actually play this as a shadow as well, which is actually a really good choice as well, just as good as the witch. You would simply have to start here with the elemental damage nodes and then use the cast speed nodes and then continue throughout the tree. But uh, I'm playing it as, uh, or as the witch, and uh, the first way you're gonna go, or I went, is through the uh, spell damage route. And what we want in this skill tree is, of course, things such as uh, critical strike chains for spells. We have uh, Annihilation, Doomcast, we have Arcane Potency. And besides that, the, the best way to scale or crit damage is through the power charges. So we're picking up all the power charges. We have Overcharge here. We have uh, instability and we also get uh, spell damage per power charge and since we're using seven power charges we get 28 percent increased spell damage which is of course pretty nice and here's the last remaining one and as i said seven uh, power charges that can only happen if you choose to help uh, alira on merciless difficulty so that is what i would suggest you do uh, we're picking up more crit here throughout the uh, assassination skill node and of course, we're picking up a lot of life throughout the skill tree. I've picked up this dexterity node because it helps with leveling the skill gems and so on, but you should be able to get enough dexterity on your gear to spec out of this later on. Besides that, things such as elemental damage, lightning damage is of course nice. And uh, we have this really nice and notable here, Stormweaver, increased cold damage, lightning damage and mana regeneration, which is perfect for uh, our build since we rely on that mana regeneration to run Arctic Armor. And I should of course say that we pick up Eldritch Battery that converts all our energy shield that I, as I just mentioned before. Um, and through that we are actually able to sustain a high level Arctic Armor. We are also picking up uh, the notable Celestial Punishment. 25% uh, increased damage against Frozen Shock to Ignite in enemies. And since we crit so frequently this is basically like a permanent 25 percent increased damage that we're getting and we're picking up celestial judgment as well for the increased elemental damage and the fire or the uh, lightning penetration so pretty good i would also suggest you pick up uh, sovereignty here along with the two reduced mana reservation notes um if you want you can pick these two aura effect notes if you're not using cloak of defiance but if you're using Cloak of Defiance, you want to have as much mana on reserve to help with that damage mitigation. So that's what I would suggest. Um, I'm not going to show you step for step how you should level it, but I would suggest that you start by going up here, then go in this direction, head over to the Templars uh, part of the tree and pick these before you spec into crit. Then when you reach about level 60 or so, you can start picking up all of the power charges and uh, Annihilation here, for instance, you will be going through this in the beginning. So picking up Annihilation is a nice uh, boost at that time as well. Pick up the other power charges here, Doomcast, start to spec into that crit. But of course, you always want to have enough life and mana regeneration to be able to sustain your Arctic armor and keep yourself alive. So that's your main priority. Crit is what you want to get last. Um, and yeah, that's about it for the skill tree, guys. For the bandit quest, you should simply help Oak on normal for the life, kill them all on cruel difficulty, and help Alira on merciless difficulty if you want that power charge. You can go with the skill point if you prefer, but I uh, would suggest you go with the power charge. And that's the build, guys. I will make a full build guide for this character later on in the league. But for now, I hope this serves or is sufficient. Thank you for watching and bros, do you even nerd?